Dugongs are amazing, amazing creatures. They really are. They're huge. Last remaining marine serenian on the planet. That's the only species left. Just big and beautiful and charismatic. They have the ability to just bring everybody together. You look at the, the geographical scope of dugongs from Africa all the way through South Asia, Southeast Asia into the Pacific. You've got a range of cultures, a range of languages, a range of histories, political situations, and, and different affinities that people have for dugongs. And in some countries, they're just simply food, but in other countries, they're, they're part of people's growing up, they're part of their tradition, their culture, their heritage. And, and if conservation is going to succeed, it has to be able to listen to all of that at the same time. One of the biggest problems has been that dugongs across a big part of their range have just declined in numbers drastically. And there are a couple of surviving pockets, Australia and the, the, the Arabian Gulf, but through the rest of the range, they're, they're just remnants of the populations that existed before. And so if this project can start to reverse that trend, if we can start seeing people really focused on dugongs, and obviously their habitats, and, and try and see those numbers start to come back up. Imagine being able to reverse a declining trend and have an impact on conservation. Seagrasses are a very important ecosystem globally and they are important food for the dugongs. So dugongs are seagrass specialists. A dugong will eat around about 28 to 40 kilograms of seagrass in a day. They are some, becoming some of the most threatened ecosystems. That's because since about the 1980s we've been losing our seagrass meadows of a rate of about two football fields per hour. When people go out at low tide fishing, it's not just an activity of collecting food, it's also an activity that's important for community cohesion. Seagrasses have got a huge importance and value for human well-being, but because those, those values are so diverse and so um, complex, we don't really have such a, a good understanding of them all. And actually this project will help us to understand some of those values, help us develop a greater appreciation for why we really need to protect seagrasses for humanity's reasons and for actually the, the conservation of an endangered species, which is the dugong. And so with this project, the overall conservation objective is, is tied to some type of human behavioral change. And if we want human behavioral change, we have to think about you know, what incentives are going to motivate that change. Often people think about designing conservation programs just focused on what's best for the dugong, but in reality what you need to do is think about what kind of program can you design that people are actually going to sign up for, because in most cases these programs are going to be voluntary, right? We're not going to force uh, these communities to change, so they're going to have to want to change. And usually they want to participate for multiple reasons. Often maybe they do want to improve their livelihood and, and want access to credit or alternative supplementary revenue streams as payments. Usually you do stuff in addition to monetary. You do it because it aligns with your values, it aligns with the world that you want to live in, etc. Conservation is not a new concept mm. for local communities in the mm. South. It's, it's what has been practiced for generations. Mm. I guess it's when you go species management and mm. getting those bits together and mm. you're taking, it seems, a new idea. Get new inputs from the communities on how to do management of, um, so that it's not only us, you know, sharing or giving the information, but learning from them how to do it better. It's exciting to finally see the funding and the technical support come online after several years of 
working on it together and trying to raise funding and awareness about dugongs. This is a really great global opportunity to help conserve them. Probably the first concerted effort of its kind, so we're really excited to be part of the project. We have one dugong that's nicknamed Doug the Dugong who visits Dilly and he's a regular. When he comes into town, the text messages go around and everybody goes out snorkeling. We've now found that one of the communities has heard about these creatures uh, from their ancestors and nobody in that village had ever seen a dugon in their lifetime until about two or three years ago when they started turning up again. So, you know, it's, it's really exciting, the possibilities. We, we always thought that we just had dug the dugon. We don't know why those dugons suddenly turned up in that village again. It's really exciting that that has happened the same time that um, this project is going on. So yes, hopefully, I don't think we'll name all of the dugongs. <laughs> hopefully we'll have too many to name by the time we're finished counting them all.